All right. So like I was saying, welcome to our workshop. I'm very excited to be sharing all of this with you. We are going to try to cover four applications today. So if you looked at the description of today's workshop, we are going to be talking about Premiere, Audition, Animate, and After Effects. So I know for many of you, you probably haven't used all four before, and you might not know why you might use one over the other. So we're going to do a short project in each one is our goal for today. And this is our schedule. So we're going to do some introductions first and then get you set up with the software and do an overview of how to get everything. And then our short projects in each one in Premiere Pro, we're going to go do a getting to know you activity. In Audition, we are going to do a podcasting overview in case you want to start your own podcast. We'll take a quick stretch break before we transition over to Animate, and we're going to talk about some frame-by-frame -frame animation if you enjoy drawing. And then in After Effects, I have a green screen compositing activity. So before we get started with any of this, I want to make sure that we're all able to access the software. So if you haven't yet, we are going to open up a web browser and log into Adobe. And this is the order that we're going to go in today. So this is also the order that I would download things in the event that it takes a while. So our first one is going to be in Premiere Pro. And I want to make sure that all of you are going to start by downloading Premiere Pro because that also is one of the ones that takes the longest. So if you haven't yet gotten the software, we are going to go to Adobe dot com and I'm going to log out first so if you are logged in correctly you should see this where it says welcome to Adobe and your name and then you should have all the things that says your apps if your screen when you log in says free trial or buy we're going to log out again so you're going to click your little icon in the upper right, and you're going to go to sign out. And then we're going to sign in again. We'll continue with Google. You're going to pick your USC email address. So if you have a personal account, you use your USC email, and you'll do continue with Google. And if it, if it pops up for you, if you've had an Adobe account before on your personal profile, make sure that you're selecting the USC one. So mine's is Occidental because I also teach at Occidental. Um, but if it gives you the option of this, make sure that you're selecting the Annenberg USC one. And then when you log in this time, it should take you to a home screen that has the apps. So then to start, we are gonna download Premiere Pro. Once that's done, go on to Audition. You can see right now Audition is not listed in here. So if we go to View All Apps, you'll be able to see the four. So once again, Premiere Pro Audition is down here. Animate and then After Effects. So I'm just going to walk around for a moment and just make sure everybody is on track and looks good. You are stuck for that question. Yeah, okay, looks like we are all downloading. So let's do some introductions as we are waiting. And yes. Uh, you can do without, we won't be using yes. No, so if it's saying free trial, that means that you're not logged in to your correct yet. Right, so let's let's do sign out. And let's make sure that it's on because you can also have your own personal profile with your USC oh, email address. So do you continue with Google? Oh. And then do that. And then yes. Sorry for being all the way in the corner. The tether to the projector is very short. 
So I will be doing lots of walking around, but lecturing from over here, I guess it's also good because now I'm not blocking the screen. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't mock Did you get the email that says like you have access to Adobe? I don't It should be from So you need to confirm your email address first. Mm -hmm. And then you click that. And then you should be good to go. And then you do the same thing. All right, so getting to know all of you a little bit. So once again, as we're doing intros, this is the order that you're gonna install one. So as soon as you're done with Premiere, click on Audition, after Audition, do Animate, after Animate, we're gonna do After Effects. <laughs> so intro about me. Um, this is my email address. If you want to jot that down, if you have questions about any of the Adobe applications or websites or anything like that in general, feel free to reach out to me after. Um, I am an Adobe certified educator and I have certifications in all the things. My specialty is in video, um, but I also teach a lot of Photoshop and After Effects. So Hana is our Photoshop teacher here um, and is also wonderful. So if you go to other workshops, you'll see her as well. Professionally, I work on in the film industry. That's me on set during COVID um, as a DP, AD, VFX editor, and a colorist. So if you have questions about working on set or anything like that, I've been doing that for a very long time. I have 22 years of classroom teaching experience and 18 years of production experience. So I've been on set for quite a while um, and have been a teacher for quite a while as well. So I like the combination of both. So if any of you are thinking professionally of any of that, let me know, happy to stay and chat after class as well. Um, I work full time as the director of digital media and production at Occidental. So right down the street from all of you and I oversee all of our software, film equipment. Um, I teach demos for other classes over there. So that's actually where I came from today. And I also work as a SAG talent agent um, at Pandium Fusion, which is in Glendale. So if any of you, I know last semester we had lots of Annenberg students that want to do like management or be an agent, more than happy to talk to you about that as well. We actually had somebody intern from us or for us from USC last summer. So getting to know all of you, I'd like to know preferred name pronouns. If you've had any Adobe experience so far, it doesn't have to do with one of the four things we're gonna talk about today, just any Adobe experience and why you came today. What is something you are hoping to learn? Can we start with you? Hi, my name is Isabella Shushu. Uh, I, well, I have some of the experience. I worked with InDesign mainly. Uh, I'm also taking the illustrator class. Uh, the InDesign experience is more or less self-taught, which is very difficult, but like, but I got there. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping to learn just like an overview of these uh, applications mainly. Uh, I think it's they're very useful, especially if uh, managing social media and all that. I think they're very, very useful. Awesome. Did you learn InDesign for a yearbook or a newspaper? Uh, the NGO that I worked with uh, instead, like, they they do public, public some publications. Okay. So since I was in comms, I just yeah. Okay. Multitasking. Yeah. Welcome. I'm Sunan. Call me Blue. Um. So I don't really have any experience about Adobe. Um. 
but yeah, I, I actually I tried it before, but I think it's just so hard for me to understand all of the functions in this particular app. Uh, so um, the reason I want to learn this class is because um, I would um, I, I I always post something online and I want to make my own video. Mm -hmm. So I really want to know how to cut videos and uh, um, do some effects on the videos. Great. What do you cut videos on right now? Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a Chinese app. Okay. Yeah, it's very easy to use, but it's just too simple and I want to learn a more complicated one. Okay. Sounds good. Welcome. And let's go across. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren. I'm the chief of the I use a lot of Amazon uh, apps, but not professionally. I dabble in Illustrator. I do the logo, poster, Photoshop, and stuff. Um, I use Premiere uh, to make films. In my film class, I use InDesign uh, for my school newspaper. I use animation for my animation class. So I use a bit of everything, but nothing um, too difficult. So only like the basic stuff, like cut, put it together, brush, or whatever. If it's like film or um, logo design, just like do that through the Illustrator. Something that's really epic to learn, um, at least view-wise, uh, I would like to learn more about Photoshop. Um, and after effect, I try to get that um, get out my bill. Um, but in this class, I just wanted to help um, revisit all the things that I've learned um, to see like the certification. Welcome. Also, how many of you are in one of the certification courses this semester? Good handful. Wait, what are we all taking? Illustrator, Photoshop. Yay! Photoshop. Yay, two people in After Effects. That's the one that I'm teaching. The others are also great. Okay. All right, let's wrap around. Awesome. You are in luck because InDesign has actually not changed greatly in 10 years, um, but Photoshop definitely has in terms of the tools and just being able to do stuff quicker. Great. I learned the Photoshop and Illustrator when I was in my graduate and I used it in my school club and also like a project in school. And also after I graduate, I uh, use it in my job, like doing some logo design or like photo editing. And also, I like self learn the premiere in very basic level. Yeah, so I really want to learn more about the premiere so I can edit a video or a picture. Yay! A lot of you are mentioning premiere, but nobody's in the premiere workshop. Okay, okay awesome. Welcome. I have a little bit of experience with Photoshop, and I'm like a little bit more in design just from high school stuff. Um, I'm hoping to get more video editing, so probably get Premiere and stuff like that, um, just to market myself better as a multimedia journalist. Great, welcome. My experience with how I'm teaching her, um, I was state teacher at the time, so. Because of journalism, I got a lot of experience in Adobe Premiere and then Audition, but I've never used anything for After Effects, so instead, just use it. Great. 
yeah, I tried to put our popular ones first so that maybe it'll be a review and then less people have used Animate and After Effects. So after a short break, we'll dive into some new stuff. Welcome. Um, I thought it's by Illustrator Fresco. Okay. And audition. They say I know a tutor that. But I really want to learn animation. Great. What do you use audition for? Spotify. Okay. Very cool. Yay. So you are our podcasting expert. <laughs> awesome. I like how so many of you are like, I haven't really learned it, but I've dabbled or I'm self-taught and haven't done it professionally. That honestly is the best way to start. Um, that's actually how I got involved in all Adobe stuff. I was 18 and in college doing my first, I was a work study student. So I had an on-campus job and I wanted to work in the communications office. And they asked, you know, do you know Photoshop? And back then it was CS2, very early version of Photoshop. And you know, in a job interview, you're always like, yes, absolutely. Had no idea what Photoshop was, had never opened up Photoshop. But I was like, you know, this is what the internet's for. I will Google it. I will figure it out. There actually wasn't Google back then, but you could like look things up. There's help articles and things like that. And so I was like, yeah, um, had some Photoshop experience, feel pretty comfortable with graphics. And they emailed me later that afternoon and they're like, congratulations, you got the job. Can you start as early as tomorrow? And I was like, sure, no problem. And I walk in and I figure today is going to be just like a training day. I show up and they're like, our Photoshop experts here, perfect, because we have a question. Can you like come help? I'm like, have not had time to Google yet. And I showed up and my boss at that time was trying to resize something for our magazine. And he said, you know, I'm doing image size and it's kind of scaling everything down, but it's not the correct proportion. And when I do canvas size, it's cropping it kind of weird. And I was like, yeah, so walk me through what you're doing one more time <laughs> as I learn. Um, and I was like, well, image size is kind of scaling down the whole image and canvas size is actually cropping the canvas. So we're going to need to do a combination of the two. So we're going to crop first and then we're going to scale down. And later I found out there actually is a crop tool we could have just used. But at the time, it got the effect that we were trying to do. And he's like, this is so great. We haven't had a Photoshop expert for a while in the office. So you're going to be super useful. And ever since then, I was the office's Photoshop expert. So much so that two years later, he left and went to go work at Corn Ferry International, which is a big headhunter company, um, and brought me with him on the web team as the Photoshop person. And I just winged it for the next eight years as like the Photoshop person without having ever taken a Photoshop class. So firstly, I just wanted to applaud all of you for showing up as like, I dabbled, but let me take a course. And today we are gonna do an overview so that you feel a little bit more solid about like what each application does and why you might use it. Do we all have Premiere installed? All right, so our first activity is gonna be a getting to know you activity. So I want you to think of three fun facts about yourself. And then we are gonna gather videos that are going to showcase those three things. And for our first project, we are gonna go to pexels.com. So P-E-X-E-L-S.com. How many people are familiar? Why is this a great website? <laughs> Yes, 
this is one of the big royalty-free websites. So if you're looking for photos, videos, anything that is going to be high quality that you can use for your projects. So Annenberg students, what does that mean when I say something is royalty-free that you can use in your projects? Journalism, your own personal work, marketing. Yes, that you don't have to provide attribution and you don't owe royalties. So oftentimes when you license something, you have a set period that you can use the image for and you have paid for that period or you have to annotate and say, this is a photo taken by this person. And royalty free, so public domain zero, which means you don't even have to provide attribution. You can use these commercially. You don't have to provide attribution. You also, what I like about this website is you don't have to create an account <laughs> because I have so many different accounts all over the internet. So what we're gonna do is specifically look for videos. And we are going to be making a horizontal video about yourself. And I am going to look for videos. And my first fun fact is I play the piano. I've actually been playing the piano since I was three. And I used to compete around the state when I was seven. Um, and this is one of the pianos that kind of looks like the one that I had growing up. And then once you find your video, you are going to download it and you'll notice it will download straight away to your computer. So think about your three things. And if you are getting a lot of vertical videos, you can also come over here and go to filters. And we're specifically looking under orientations for horizontal videos. So take about five minutes or so, come up with your three fun facts. And once you have your videos, then you're going to launch Premiere. All right, 
So once you're all set, we're going to launch Premiere Pro. And make sure you know where you save those three videos. Okay, so you clicked on the link and you activated the check box. Okay, let's try signing out one more time. Yeah, which you're supposed to do. So, so yeah, let's do continue. And it's just on ground with Let's do this. Let's sign out. Yeah. And then let's go back to that email. The email from Adobe saying click here to verify your address. Uh, this should be yes. And then, yeah, so still putting your password. email where it says your Adobe email address for change. Yeah. And then you changed it back. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do that for each file for right now. And then we'll figure out okay. how to do your license after. Yeah, because your free trial will be good for some. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Okay. None of you are trying to find the perfect video. We just yeah. need three videos for our first project. All right, so once you're finished and you have Premiere launched, we are gonna come up to new project. And this import window um, that shows up, I will say most professional editors don't actually use this. Um, this is a good way if you wanted to pre-cut your project, you can click on clips kind of in the order that you want them and they're gonna show up down here in the timeline so that when you hit create, your project kind of gets started for you. I'm going to remove these and show you typically for video editors, when you start a project, you kind of just go into it. So instead of having anything selected, I'm just gonna click on the create button and that's gonna take me straight into Premiere Pro. And we can also import from this window, which is what we're gonna do. So for those of you who have not used Premiere Pro previously, I don't know why the top of my screen is cut off. Okay, close enough. Um, we're going to do a quick tour, but I want to make sure that we are all looking kind of similar. So at the very top, where it says window, we're going to do window, workspaces, and I want you all to start on editing. 
Similar to any other Adobe app, when you click on workspaces, you have a bunch of presets depending on what you're trying to do, like in Photoshop. So we're gonna be on the editing workspace. And then in the bottom left where it says add your media, we are going to import those three video files that we just downloaded. So your window should kind of look like this. If you have- You'll need to unlock. Okay, Siri. Um, if you have it listed like this, that's perfect, you're in good shape. If right now it looks like this, we're gonna come down to where it has this little list view down here and click on that to toggle so that we can see information about your clips. Okay, so let's see how much video knowledge we all have so far. You can see over here our first thing. Window workspace. Oh, and then, yeah, and then. All right, so first thing we have for each of these, I have a frame rate. Who can give us what is a definition for a frame rate? Yes, that was my attempt. Yes, that was very good. Yeah, so frames per second, we can think about them as moving pictures that are cycling through per second of time. So typically, you're mentioning 24 frames per second. 24 is a standard for what? That's the one that we hear the most for film. So if we're shooting something and we're setting our camera, chances are we'll set it to 24 frames per second. If we're doing something that is meant to be a movie, we'll set up our timeline for 24 frames per second. If we look though at the ones that I grabbed from Pexels, I have 25 frames per second. I have 29.97 frames per second. So all of these are usable, but I need to figure out what my frame rate should be for my project. So you can actually set your frame rate first. And I'd recommend that, especially when you're bringing in media from outside sources. So if you're ever collecting videos from like YouTube and doing screen recordings and downloading from Pexels, don't arbitrarily, and this is what a lot of people do when they start using Premiere, they'll click on one and it'll say, drag media here to make a sequence. And they'll be like, well, I'm starting with this one and I'm gonna click and make a sequence. Because whatever clip you drag first, that is what your whole project is going to be. It's going to be that frame rate and it's going to be that size. So instead, we are going to make our own sequence based on both frame rate and your size. But let's talk about frame rate for a second. So we have 24 frames per second. That's popular. What about 30 frames per second? What is that used for? What else do you watch besides movies? What documentaries? Yeah, could be also a movie or like a documentary TV show. So TV is actually 30 frames per second. And you'll notice over here, we have one that's very close to 30 frames per second, 29.97. And so you'll see like 24 frames per second and you'll also see 23.976. And so this, the 29.97, those are specifically for broadcast. So I know many of you are in journalism. If you're streaming something, if I was setting it up at 30 frames per second, there's gonna be a tiny bit of delay in a 30 minute program because of the signal, where by the end of the day, the programming will be off by like a minute or two. So if you're doing something that is specifically supposed to go over a network, that's why the frame rate is a tiny bit less to accommodate that so that the programming ends on time. So that's why that's 29.97, or you'll see the other one for 24, which is 23.97. But if you're not, and you're just putting it on YouTube or social media, you're going to do the exact frame rate of either 24 or 30. Does anybody know 60 frames per second? What is that used for? We're not seeing it up there, but that's the other big option. Speed. 
support. And this is why. So I want you to all take your hand carefully and you're going to move it back and forth in front of your face like this. And try to look at the outline of your fingers and move your hand faster and faster. What happens? It blurs because your eyes are actually capturing images as it's doing it. Do you know what frame rate your eyes capture at? Around 16 frames per second. So when we see a movie, we're actually only watching like two thirds of the movie. You can't capture as fast as a building camera can. And you definitely can't capture as fast as TV. And you absolutely cannot capture as fast as 60 frames per second. But why would we shoot sports at 60 frames per second then? Not too long. Nailed it, slow motion. Who likes math? Okay, party for one. Um, so if our eyes are capturing 16 frames per second, if I shot, say, at a football game at 24 frames per second, and I was like, instant replay, we slow it down half speed. How many frames per second? 12. But our eyes can capture 16. So anything less than that, you can actually see the individual pictures go past, and it doesn't look like video anymore. So that's where you can see bad YouTubers that don't know how to do slow-mo. You actually have to shoot at a higher frame rate in order to do slow motion. It's not just something that you do in post. So if you're making funny videos and you know you're gonna slow it down, you actually have to shoot faster than that. So everybody take out your phone for a second. And we are gonna go to your settings on your phone. I'm gonna do it for an iPhone. Does anybody have an Android? Look at this class, perfect. Okay, so if you take our phone and you go down to your camera settings, you'll see at the top, record video, record slow-mo, and then on mine also record cinematic, depending on what version of iPhone you have. But if you look at record video, you can actually change your frame rate and your resolution on there. So like for mine, I can record 4K at 60 frames per second. You can also see if you go back, record slow-mo, I can do 180 frames, which is, or 1080p, which is HD resolution, at 240 frames per second. So just like imagine, your eyes are capturing 60 frames per second. Anything faster is going to look like fluid video. 240 frames per second, you could make that like one eighth the speed and that would still look like video. That's also gonna take up a crazy amount of space on your phone. So that's also why we're gonna do a combination of making sure it's high quality, but also not really space prohibitive. So in here we have our frame rate and if you scroll across, you'll also be able to see the size of the video. So you can see in here, we have a couple different options. It has 1920 by 1080, and that's the standard resolution for what? That's the one that we were kind of just talking about. This is HD resolution. So when you're watching a YouTube video and you see under your settings that you can watch it at 1080, or you can watch it at 4K, 1080 is HD. Going back to math, who can tell me what are the dimensions of 4K video? I'll give you a hint. 4K is actually double HD. You're close, you're very close. It is for this one, 1920 times two, 3840. And then I think you said 2160. Yes, yes, and 2160. And that's where the 4K comes from. This 3840 is what we are calling 4K or 4000. 
So this means how many dots of information across and up and down in your video. So for a sequence in Premiere, before we get started, if we're collecting multiple videos, we're going to come up to File, New. I know it's hard because you can't see the very top of my screen, but File, New, and then we're going to go to Sequence. And in your sequence, you'll see in here that we have a couple of different options. But we are going to come to the settings at the top and choose the two things that we just talked about. So where it says time-based, we're going to select that 24 frames per second. And where it says the frame size, we are going to select 1920 by 1080. And I think this is the big difference between like kind of guessing what you're doing in Premiere and having a solid plan for what you're doing in Premiere is making sure you set it up correctly. All right, so once you're done with that, now we can do the fun part of adding your videos. My videos are all different sizes, so chances are I need to scale them. So what I want you to do first is we're gonna put all three videos into your timeline and we're gonna size them so that they fill up the screen the way that we want. So I'll do a quick demo first. I'm going to put in my first clip and you'll see it will give you this little pop-up thing saying, do you want to change your sequence to match the clip settings? No, we do not because we just made the sequence very specifically 24 frames per second at 1920 by 1080. If we drop our clip in and then we change the sequence settings, that defeats the whole purpose. So we're going to say, keep the existing settings. So I'm going to put mine in and I'm going to first double click on them so I can see what my video is. So quick overview of Premiere. The one on the left is called your source window, and this is where we're going to preview our media. The one on the right is what your output looks like. We call this the program window. So when I'm working with my media, I'm doing kind of like a this area up to this area, down to this area, looking at this area. I don't like this little zigzag dance. So clicking on this, I can preview and see this is my very cute beagle video. And let's say that this was really long and I didn't want to put the whole thing into my timeline. I can pre-cut it in this window. So keyboard shortcuts that are really useful are I for in and O for out. And what's great about this is if I downloaded, say, like a whole YouTube video, but I only wanted 20 seconds, I don't have to take it from here and import the whole thing into my timeline. I can preview it in here, pre-cut it, and then when I drag and drop, I'm only taking that section into my timeline. The great thing is that it's not deleted. So if I decide later on, actually, I needed that other part. I can click and drag this out again, and it's going to pull in from the original media inside of here. So we're first going to take a moment, and you're going to preview your video, drag and drop in here. I'd also recommend when you preview your video, rename your file, which you can do just by clicking and typing. So on mine, I have a dog. And I have the piano. And I have my video game. And then once you have them in your timeline, we're going to scale, because remember, these are all different sizes, by clicking, double clicking on one of your clips. It will pop back open in this window. You're going to click on the Effect Controls tab, and you'll be able to see you have position and scale at the top. So position is listed on an XY axis. 
So remember your X axis controls left to right, your Y axis controls up and down. So you can reposition it into the frame. And then scale, same thing. I'm just clicking and dragging on the number to scale it accordingly. So on this, for example, I might wanna scale in a little bit and then also move it so that her hands are a little bit more centered. So you can get really precise with these numbers. You can also double click on the right hand side and that will show you your bounding box for your video as well. So you can also visually resize and click and drag and drop them around. So take a moment, put in your videos um, and kind of scale them, move them around, make sure that they're in the order that you want and that you've kind of filled up the whole space. Oh, All right, so for our first one, we are going to be keeping this very simple. So we are going to add a short title over each one explaining what you are talking about here. So you'll notice on this one, I have audio with video. All the things from Pexels don't actually have audio. Even if they have an audio track, it's like an empty audio track. There's no sound on their videos. So if you are looking at this and you're like, wait, where's the sound? Where's the audio? There is none. 
Um, if you're playing it and you don't hear anything, there's nothing there. You can actually click on that separately and press delete to take out the audio. So for our first project, we're not making audio, we're just doing a video. And so hopefully at this point, you've had everything in your timeline, you have clicked on things and you have scaled and moved them around to where they wanna go. And now we're ready to add some text. So where we went up to window workspaces and we picked editing before, we're gonna switch over to our captions and graphics. And Premiere comes with so many preset, really cool graphics that you can add and use in your projects. So to use any of them, you would scroll down to one that you wanna use, like I might use this modern title one. And we're gonna click, drag and drop that onto video track two on top of what you were talking about like so. And when I select that, you'll see that I have this edit tab over on the right hand side. And I know that many of you have used Photoshop. And it is very similar to Photoshop in that these are layers. And you can modify each layer and you can also create additional layers. So in the one that I added here, I have modern title as a layer, and I have a line as a layer. So you'll notice when I click on each one, the parameters change as well. So when I clicked on text, I have all my like font, size, styling, et cetera. When I clicked on the line, you can see that I can choose my stroke, my fill color. And I can also change the order. So just like in Photoshop, order is important. So if I put the line on top, it will be in front of the title versus this is behind the title. And then to edit, I would just double click to type. So I can say something like, I've been playing the piano since I was three. And you can see, obviously that's too big. So I'm gonna come down to my font size and I will just scale this down. like so. So what's really cool about these is a lot of these have graphic styles already and they're animated already. So if I play this by hitting the space bar, a general good rule when you're doing titles is read the whole thing out loud and that's how long it should be on screen for. So if I'm playing this and I say, I've been playing the piano since I was three. And then I stop. That's about how long it should be on screen. So on any of these, I'm going to take it and drag it to make it as long as it seems to take for me to say it out loud. So for each one of your videos, you are now going to add a title on the top. And if it seems like we're holding too long, like I said, I've been playing the piano since I was three and then it goes away, and then we still play the piano for a long time after, that gets boring. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'll leave it playing for a little bit, and then I'm gonna trim it. So I'm gonna make this a little shorter, and I see many of you shuffling things around. To make this ripple delete, I'm gonna click in the blank space and press the delete key on my keyboard, and that will nudge everything over. So we're gonna add some titles and we're gonna fix the timing on these to make it seem more snappy. Yeah. 
If your video and your audio are linked together, you're going to press Command L to unlink them, and then you can select one of them at a time. Make sure as you're working that you have also saved your project in case Premiere crashes. So that's just coming up to file. And then you can, if you're not sure where you saved it, do you save as? And we're aiming for something kind of like this in about the next five minutes. So I have my three fun facts and my three videos.
All right, so I'm going to go over exporting. I know some of you are still working. I know we're moving pretty quickly through all of the applications today, so you don't have to do a masterpiece. But I want to show you how we're going to export once you're ready. So you're going to come back to the beginning, and just like how we pre-cut that clip before we put it into our timeline, we're going to use the same keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to go to the very beginning and press I on the keyboard for in. And you're going to go to the very end and press O on your keyboard for out. And if you did it correctly, you should have a highlighted region like that so that it knows which section it's going to export. And then we're going to come over to our export tab on the top. So it's over here. I know it's cut off from my screen, but we're looking at this area over here. And then you are going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call mine about me. And make sure you know where you're saving it. So I'm putting mine on my desktop. And the default on yours probably says match source adaptive high bit rate in H264, which is perfect. So if it doesn't say that, these are what we want to select. So H.264 is a compressed file format. This is going to make an MP4 file that can be uploaded to Vimeo or YouTube, or in our case, our Padlet site. And then match source is saying the same frame rate and the same size. So we made that 1920 by 1080. And we're going to just match that. When you're finished, we are going to export. And when your export is complete, you are going to give it a name and you are going to upload it to our super cool Padlet. Um, make sure that you have um, your timeline selected first. Yes, and then if you click on export. Okay, I will come visit in one sec. And if you haven't used Padlet before, um, we are going to go to tinyurl.com slash usc dash adobe. And we are going to upload your first project here. So you'll click the little plus over here. And then for subject, give it your name. And then that first icon, you're going to upload your MP4 video that you made. And when it's finished, you'll hit publish. But let me put up our little Padlet link. Okay, let's well, go back to that. And let's make sure it's like inside of here. Like just anywhere inside there. 
Mm -hmm. And then let's try one more time because sometimes that happens like if it doesn't have to be this. No, okay, well manually. So we go back to edit, go up to the top and do file. And then export. I would save it and just close and open again, and then it should be in here. Like, I would like, yeah, you're moving your screen cursor to the other. Good. And then, yeah. So I think the next word that is going to carry. Yeah, once yours is uploaded, we are done with Premiere. Let's take a look at what you made. I know that some of you are still exporting, but I'm going to start with the ones that are up so far. All right, so this was my super cool example. I 
I used to have a beagle as a kid, but I won't get another one until I have like a yard and it can go outside and run. Currently have an apartment. It's not at all the same. All right, Nadia. I've done way more traveling than me. Anything you want to add? This, this, it's cool. All right, Aiden's. Very cool. Anything you want to add? Are you in like orchestra or something here? All right, Lillian. Who's your team? <laughs> Yay. Good answer. Anything that you want to add? I know, I know. It's so funny. Like what is available on Pexels, which means you should go film something and submit it to be like, this is hip hop dancing and help everybody else out in the future. All right, Isabella's. Is that a Pexels video or your cat? <laughs> Anything that you want to add? Great. Thank you. All right. Ava's. Ava, that went so fast. Yes, so we can watch one more time. Yes, it's hard in the timeline to see, but like, yeah, if you look at the top of the time code. Yes, you got lots of fun facts in there, though. All right, Ingrid. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you want to re-upload, we will circle back to you. All right. Whose is this one? Yay. Wait, put your name on too so that we can have a record. Twins. Yay. Anything you want to add? 
No. What's your What's your go to cooking dish? Just, just to enjoy the food. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Um, let me exit out of our full screen mode. Um, there we go. Did I get everybody who submitted? Yes. All right, if you are still working on yours, we'll circle back in a second, but I wanna do a quick overview of podcasting. So if we open up Audition, Audition is Adobe's audio platform. And so what I really like is they have several different templates that you can use. And I just want to show you how easy it is to make your own podcast if you've never made one before, which is a crime if you live in LA and you don't have a podcast because everybody has a podcast here. But when you create a podcast, you have a couple of main things that you always use. So one, you probably have a host. Two, you probably have somebody that is being a guest on the show. Three, you probably have some kind of music. And four, you might have some kind of sound effects. So before we dive into Audition, I wanted to show you my other favorite stock website, which is Pixabay. So Pixabay is very similar to Pexels, but it is Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. And in addition to having pictures and videos, Pixabay also has music and sound effects. So if we were looking for something that was like an intro music, you can see in here, these are all royalty-free music and sound effects. So if I wanted my opening to be... Yeah. No, nope. I'm just echoing by myself. Um, let me see if I can play it. I'm just gonna play it off my speaker. And I could be like, welcome to today's podcast after that starts playing. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab a piece of music and we're gonna talk about how we can import and we can record an audition. So don't take a long time finding your piece of music. You can grab anything that kind of speaks to you. And then once you found one that you're like, ooh, then you're going to click on download. And then we're going to open up Audition. And when Audition first opens, we are going to create a new multi-track session. You want to give it a name and make sure you know where you're saving it. And from the template, we are going to select a podcast. And then you'll click OK. Uh, 
All right. So audition looks a little intimidating to start, but basically the way it works is this is your multi-track view that allows you to have, as it sounds, multiple tracks. And you can see that in a podcast template, they're also labeled for you. So we have a host, the interviewer, sound effects, and a music bed. They also gave you some markers that you can move around for like a 30 second intro and a 30 second outro to kind of help you time out your podcast. And any of these markers you can drag around as well. So like if you wanted this to be the outro and you wanted to move it, you can just like click and drag and move that around. But I wanna show you first how to import stuff and how to record. So to import stuff, pretty simple. We're gonna go to file, import, file. And I want you to grab your music file that you just downloaded. So very similar to Premiere, when we import stuff, it doesn't end up in your project right away. It's gonna end up in your media browser over here. And then to put it into our project, we're gonna take it, drag, and I'm gonna drop it to where it says music. And just like Premiere, if I go to the beginning and I press the space bar, I can see there's my podcast so far. I'm going to pause for a second. All right, perfect. And then the two big things in Audition that you have to be aware of is we have arrows up here and we have effects over here. And so I'm gonna make sure I'm on the arrows first and this is your input and output. So if you have say an external microphone as opposed to the one that's built into your computer that you wanna use, the first thing that you have to do before you can record is pick your microphone. So you'll notice I have two arrows down here. I have one that is pointing and it says none, and then one that is pointing to the left that says master. So the one that's pointing in, that's your input. And where it says none, I can't record because it's not figuring out my microphone yet. So if I click the little pop out there and I come over to my audio hardware, this is how you connect a microphone. So where it says default input, I'm going to click the drop down. And if you have a microphone that's just kind of like built into your screen, you can select that from here. So I'm going to say my MacBook Pro microphone. The cool thing is all of you have an iPhone, apparently. You can also select your iPhone microphone and you get even cleaner audio because you can hold it closer to your mouth and record like this. And this will be the microphone for your computer. So we could also try that. So once you have your microphone selected, it will say, do you want to continue? And we'll say yes. And we'll click OK. So the cool thing, too, is that when you are selecting your input and your output, if, say, like you're talking here and you're interviewing somebody, you can set them all differently. So for my input, I can say that I wanted to use my MacBook Pro microphone. And then for their input, I can say that I want it to connect my cell phone and they can sit over there and then we can have two separate microphones while we're talking. So I'm gonna move my time marker a little bit past my music. 
And then to start recording your podcast, you would first click on the R to say that you want to record onto this track. This is called enabling it for recording. You'll see your little audio meters start to move so you can see your audio level. And once you're ready, you're going to come down here to this record button and you're going to press record. Welcome to this evening's podcast. We're in the Annenberg Digital Lounge learning all about Adobe Audition. And you press spacebar to stop as well. And so after you've recorded your audio, this is where now we can decide if we wanted it to go closer to our music, we can just click and drag and move it around. And we can start to interview people and kind of go back and forth between the two. So take a moment, we'll also do our stretch break at this time. Um, you don't have to make a project for this one. I just want you to like kind of test out recording. Some people don't like hearing themselves. So just know this is just for you. Um, but see if you can get your microphone connected and try to do like a little demo. And if you also need a stretch break or use the restroom, feel free. And we'll move on in about like five minutes. <laughs>
So just two things I wanted to show before we move on. You can see my music is very loud compared to my recording over here. Your yellow line on all of these tracks is your volume. So if you wanted to make your volume lower for this, you're just going to grab that yellow line and pull it down. And then same thing for my voice. If I wanted that to be louder, I can take that and pull it up. You can also create keyframes on here. So if I click on the yellow line, that creates a point. And so if I wanted the volume to fade out, I can click and then click again and adjust the volume line. So it's going to get lower like so. All right, so I think that we're all back. So if you wanted to export, you don't have to export because we haven't really made anything. But once you're done, if you went home and you made this epic podcast and you're submitting to Spotify, we're going to come up to File, Export, Multi-Track Mixdown, the entire session. And you'll notice, similar to Premiere, it will give you your file name, where you're saving it, and then the option for how you want it to be saved. If you're emailing it or uploading it to somebody, I'd recommend an MP3 file, which is compressed. If you're taking it to Premiere for another project, I'd recommend a WAV file. Questions on getting started with your own podcast. All right, let's do some drawing. So now we're gonna pivot over to some animation and we're gonna open up Adobe Animate not to be confused with character animator. But how many of you are good at drawing? Kind of, sort of. We're gonna do some drawing. This is also very good stress relief after a Monday. So once Audition launches, we are going to start with a blank canvas. So I'll give you a moment to just kind of open it up. So character animator uses motion tracking. And Character Animator takes input from your webcam and records your face in live, in real time, onto an animated character. Animate is actually like you're working on a stage and you're creating art. But if you wanted to try Character Animator, we're also doing a Character Animator After Effects workshop later in the semester that I'd recommend. All right, so for this one, we're going to create a hand-drawn, super cool animation. So if you get like a little tutorial window when you pop open, you can just click that you want to skip that. And then it should take you to this screen. And we're going to click on that first one, that full HD thing. And that should give you your blank canvas like so. All right, has anybody done any like hand-drawn animating before? This will be so fun. Okay, so what we need is first a whole bunch of blank pieces of paper. So inside of Animate, we call those keyframes. So what we're gonna do first is set our timeline where it says 30 frames per second. And we're going to look down here and you can see this is one second at 30 frames. This is two seconds at 60 frames. And so if we wanted to adjust this frame rate in that frames per second, we can come up to the top and we can go to our settings. Mm -mm -mm. Or even over here on the right hand side. Let me move my zoom window so that you can all see. Does everybody see that FPS down here? For our project, because we're drawing, we're going to do 10 frames per second. And you'll see down here that it should have changed to 10 frames per second. And if you click down in the timeline, now you should have 10 is one second, 20 is two seconds. So we're gonna click on the first little square down here. We're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna to go to 30. So we're making a very short but cool three second animation. 
you're going to right click inside and you're going to say insert blank keyframes. And it's kind of like you just laid down a whole bunch of little pieces of paper. So what we're going to do is using the paintbrush, you can pick your color from here just like you would in Photoshop. We're going to start from our very first keyframe. And we are going to do some kind of hand-drawn animation. So on mine, I might do like a vine that's growing. So I'm going to select green. And the cool, unique feature about Animate is that it has what's called onion skinning. Does anybody know animation-wise what is onion skinning? So it's an effect that animators use that allows you to see what you have drawn previously. Have we all seen the Red Bull commercials? Like Red Bull gives you wings and how it looks like they're like moving a little. So that's the effect of onion skinning where you're drawing and then drawing over what you have drawn previously. So I'm going to draw like so, and that's gonna make a frame here. Then when I go to my next frame, I want a blank piece of paper. So over here, I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. And you can see a blank keyframe looks like an empty circle. And something that has content on it has a filled in circle. And so for these, I want these to be blank keyframes. And you can change them all at the same time. Again, if you hold down shift and you select all of them and we're converting them to blank keyframes. So you should have something that has a drawing in one and then lots of empty circles after. And if you're stuck, I'll walk around and check you in a moment. To turn on onion skinning, it's going to be this little like circle next to a circle icon. And when you click on that, that now allows you to see what your previous frame looks like kind of faintly and in a different color. And that's going to help me keep track of what I've drawn so far and what I'm going to draw next. So in my next frame, I'm going to kind of draw over like so. And then maybe I'm going to add a little leaf that's coming out. Then I'm going to go to my next frame and draw over again. And then maybe my leaf on this side has gotten bigger. And I'm starting to grow another leaf over here. Next frame, et cetera. Your onion skinning can be customized as well. So if you only want to show the frame right before it, you can make it shorter. And if you don't want to show the frames after, you can click and drag to make those shorter. So what I want you to do is some kind of sketch where you're looking at your last frame and drawing the next one. So I was drawing a plant that was kind of growing. You can draw something that is like moving across the screen. So if we were drawing a person, for example, it could be like, this is frame one. And then I'm moving to the next frame. This is where we were previously. And then I can draw him kind of a little bit more over here. And then like a little bit more over here. And so you can see as I go between my frames, now I am moving forward. Or I could be a plant that is growing. So don't make something complicated. Because you can see when you animate and you're doing each frame at a time, in order to make a three second animation, you are drawing on 30 sheets of paper. So very similar to how I made that person. Think of an easy concept of like something growing or like a ball going across the screen. And then we're gonna export this as an animated GIF file. It 
because you made them big bricks when you had them. And I opened it up for you and called them and then it kind of makes it bad. Okay, well, let's do this. Did you do anything yet? Uh, I did the key. Okay, let's do this. Let's go to file. Let's go to new. Oh, just yeah, and let's time. just start and see if we can get back to this paper. Yeah, so if you ever do the doc, and that gives you three months. And then if you hold down shift and select all the way to three. Yep, and then we're going to link to the And do convert to this. Yeah, so select them all here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold down shift and then click on the next button. And then convert to this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're going to break it. Yeah, and because it's the first one, I just like and then do it. I want to use these two. Um, but in terms of like the top of the first one, like the first one. Because time or action. <laughs> I feel like yeah. <laughs> The picture I drew on the third on the yeah. side. Turn on the two circles. That's okay. your icons. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You're right. All right, I know some of you are done already. So we're gonna take about another minute or so. You don't have to make a masterpiece. If it is working and you have something animated and you get the concept, I know that if you are a perfectionist, busting out 30 drawings is not something you wanna do.
But what's cool about this is this is very translatable. So you have any question about like, is this what animators use? Yes, in that the concept of like going to the next frame and seeing what you made in the previous frame is pretty universal through most animating applications. The difference is the tools on the left hand side. So in other animation applications, you have like different brushes and like a whole variety of stuff that works a lot better, like a walk and tablet. And you can like pick the angle of your brush, the flow of the brush, etc. Uh, but in terms of the onion skinning and how you animate it, and setting up those little pieces of paper, it's going to be very similar. You just want to get as far as you can. You're aiming for three seconds. But also, if you end at like two seconds that's fine because it will like give a very satisfying pause on your final design before it loops again so whenever you're finished or at a good stopping place we're going to come up to file and we're going to export and we're going to export it as an animated GIF. This is also how you can create awesome things that you can text your friends. So you'll see down here where it says looping in the window. The default is set to forever as a good animated GIF should. And you'll see there is my super cool piece of art, half flower, half man. And when you're finished, you can hit save. You'll save it as a GIF file. And this one we are gonna put onto our Padlet. Yes, and in case you lost the website, there you go again. Yeah, make it smaller. So see where it says 100% do you fit on the screen? Yeah, and then if you come down, and then you can hit play. Um, no, that's fine. Because then you'll have some blank space at the end and before it moves so again. Just, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really like to have that because like you can see work as it comes in and you can see each other's like really quickly without having to create the slideshow. All right, while animations are coming in, I'm also going to go back because we have a couple of other ones from our first one. Lauren, that was great. You have a business that sells graduation ladies. That was good advertising to the room as well. <laughs> How do we purchase? <laughs> I write down. 
Very cool. All right. Awesome. Anything you want to add? Okay. <laughs> Nicely done. All right. Animated. Oh, no, we have one more. Wait. Did we? Oh, there we go. It's an excellent name for a dog. Anything you want to add? What? Yeah. All right, so our animated gifts, we have a very exciting ball rolling. Then we have some beautiful rain. What is happening here? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like the bee. <laughs> I like it. I like the little trail. And we can tell that you're good at drawing. All right, and I know that some of you are still uploading as well. I know that we're coming close on time, so I just wanted to show you um, After Effects and kind of what we would use for that. And I know that many of you, well, too, but many of you may be watching the recording or now after this class are like, wow, After Effects, and we could be doing it 10 full weeks together. So After Effects is very cool because you have so many different plugins that you can use with your video files, and there's a lot of different things that you can do. So today I just wanted to show you one of the most common things that you can do in After Effects, and that is creating a green screen composite. So kind of coming full circle of what we were doing today, I'm going to come back to Pexels for a moment. And we are going to take a look at some green screen footage. You can also use Pixabay, any of the above. And I'm just gonna type in green screen. And a lot of people don't know, stock stuff like Pexels, Pixabay, actually has quite a robust library of green screen stuff. And so I'm going to actually look for a video. And let's keep it simple. And I might just take this cat one right up the top. So we will download this cat video. And I'm going to do that 1920. Nope, I'm not. I'm going to do a 720 video. And then I'm going to use some kind of background. So like in this one, we might be like a cat, but in space. And then I'm going to download this as well. So who can tell me how does green screen compositing work? Like, what is the general idea? It erases the, it isolates the image so it's not going to be green. Yes, and I like how you said it erases. A lot of people say like, oh, it replaces it. No, it erases it or it covers it up. So what we're gonna do is put a green screen video on top of something else and the areas that are green become transparent and you're able to see what's underneath. So we'll do a new composition from footage and I'm going to select my two videos from here. 
So I have my cat. And then underneath it, I have space. And so in After Effects, there's a lot of different presets in here. Like we can make particle generators, we can composite green screens, we can do text animations, we can put in explosions. So if we were doing green screen compositing, basically to use something, we would type in what we're looking for. So green screen, we would do key light. And we would use this effect to use our eyedropper tool and select the screen color. And it really is that easy. And so the idea with After Effects is through the semester, if you wanna take that workshop, we'll cover a lot of the different things like how to shatter something, how to animate something, how to do a green screen composite. We're actually going to, in that class, use your phone as a green screen and remember again, when you green screen, it's making it transparent. So if you made your phone screen green and you like moved it around, you could be like a detective and you could see through your phone and like see an alternate reality or something like that. Like you can x-ray your hand with your phone and you basically put a picture of a bony skeleton on top of your hand that will only show inside of the phone. So you can do a lot of cool things in here and you have a lot of animation presets as well. So After Effects is that one that takes a lot of time to download because it comes with all the things in there. And many of these you have actually seen in TV shows already. So like for example, if I threw on this preset, we can make fog like so. And you've seen this on like title screens and things like that. I'm going to try like Cosmic Power, for example, is also very popular. And like you've seen this oftentimes opening title sequence where there's just like obscure lights. So After Effects has a lot of different things that you would use after you've edited your video or after you've made your graphic to put on those final touches of adding in extra lights or polish or compositing things together. And if you're interested in that, sign up for the After Effects workshop that is going to be starting Wednesday, this Wednesday at 8 p.m. All right, so to wrap up, I'm going to take a look. I know that we had our final people just upload now. So looking at Aiden's, oop, we're not sharing. There we go. Aiden's so stormy. Oh yeah, like if you have a pen or a tablet or a surface, you can go much faster than a mouse. <laughs> Lauren, very beautiful. <laughs> Lillian, that was intense. I like the nom. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you have a better sense of what each application can do. Thank you all so much for joining tonight. And just a reminder that we have Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, and After Effects classes running all semester. So if you want to do a deep dive in any of the applications, sign up with the Digital Lounge. It's not too late. Classes are just getting started. And I hope to see you in one of those or at a future workshop.